What's going on over there? What are you doing? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> I was just reading a message from uh -huh. an eBay buyer. Uh huh. Very interesting. Uh huh. <laughs> hey everybody, it's Sunday. Woohoo! Sunday live off. Woohoo! Woo we've had to miss a lot of these lately. I know we've missed a couple. We missed last week, mm -hmm. and uh, we've plus we totally forgot like before, like until like the day before. We're like, oh yeah, we're going to be in California uh, all day Sunday, so mm -hmm. we're not going to be doing our show. Um, but anyway, what's up, everybody? I guess last week was probably a good week to to not have our show, so we didn't have to show sad numbers. Yeah, the numbers were sad, <laughs> and the people were sad, uh... and, and it was just a pretty negative week. So yeah, it was probably a good week to skip. Yeah. But anyway, so yeah, so we don't actually have our numbers for last week, but I can tell you, um, you know, just to, I will say this week, I think we're in the bouncing back phase. Yes. Hopefully. Um, my I numbers are all right. I don't, have, I didn't have an amazing week this week, but it was more, it felt more normal. It doesn't mm -hmm. quite feel fourth quarter normal. Yours feels like it's getting closer to fourth quarter normal. Yeah, it's getting there. Um, I think, you know, in general, uh, my numbers, my sales numbers mm -hmm. and my activity is slow for this time of year, but I'm, my average dollar amount is higher. So yeah. it feels like, you know, it's, it's still acceptable. I'm down from last month. I'm down about 30% from last month, which is not normal. I've never, I haven't been down any months this entire year. Well, you've had a crazy good year and then going, into, going and then, into fourth quarter, suddenly I, being down 30%. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. kind of a lot. That's, that's a bit of an issue, but even being down 30% and I'm, and I'm down from last year this time, which is considering I've had an increase every single month. It's it's a little bit um, concerning. So yeah, I'm just doing what I can I to this you is, know, this diversify, how... diversify, diversify, diversify. <laughs> so you, as you'll see our numbers in a little bit, and uh, you know, for me, for how I normally do my numbers, they're okay. Like I had an, a decent week this last week, uh, but I'm up like over fifty percent from the week before. And that week I was down over 50% from the week before that. So, so that like, means you're like almost went, even. Whew, it went, well, no, that's no. Nah. <laughs> if you're up, you were down 50%. No, but I had, up. the week before that was pretty good. So I went down 50% from a really good week. And then I came up 50% to a mediocre week. So oh, okay. I wouldn't say that's uh, back to normal. No, gotcha. that's not how the maths work. Um, but anyway, whatever it is, what it is, um, we've both done a lot. Well, I've done a lot of work on fixing my listings and putting in all the mm -hmm. required stuff. You haven't done as much, but I will say because I well, sell, I did another 50 today. So I think I've done about five to 600 out of 2,500 so yeah. far. So I am, I do intend to do another 150. Yeah. I've been trying to do 200 a day. Mm -hmm. Well, and the thing is because I sell pretty much 100% clothing, um, I, I, I felt like it was a little bit more urgent that I get that stuff fixed as mm -hmm. soon as possible. Um, you have a lot of hard goods that you also sell, which I, I understand that some of those have um, issues around the item specifics. As not as well. many, not but, as many. But the biggest problem that had happened was around sizing, um, and stuff like that, but just yeah. trying to keep powering on through. And it's weird because um, I've, as I'm going through and checking and fixing item specifics, I am seeing how they've how, somewhat, I've see, I can see on some listings how they're patching through because the, the size is not coming up as a red flag on some, but it is on others. I do think it's rolling, whatever they're patching, yeah, I I, it's gotta be by category. I don't know. I wish I could understand the brains behind it or the lack thereof, I should say. Uh, but there's, it's hard. To there say. are fixes happening. Um, but I don't believe it's going to fix everything for everyone. So I think that if you, you know, everyone's gonna have to decide what they need to do for their own business. Mm -hmm. But personally, I'm going in and fixing things because I cannot rely on a third yeah. party to fix things, especially because they were the one that broke things. Yeah, it, if sure. that makes sense. Uh, what? Derek so. Yamamoto in the house at the beginning. What? As Cheryl says, Derek is early. What, Derek? What? Derek, we miss you. Yeah. We haven't seen you in like two months. Can you just come <laughs> over and like sit on the couch and okay. play with the dogs, please? Here's the thing. She keeps whining about missing you guys. And listen, I miss you too, Derek. Uh, but here's the thing, Derek and Amber are friends. They used to live just around the corner. Um, they moved a whole like she was very four upset miles they were, away now. Oh no, they're not even four miles. They're like two miles, if that. And we hadn't seen them in a million years when they were still living here, uh, just because of our schedules and they were super busy and and we've been busy. Um, but she just she likes to have a reason to cry about stuff, just in general. She's just kind of a crybaby pee pee pants. I kind of. Uh, but anyway, Derek, big fish. Hello. 
What's We've got happening? Joey from Ecom 101 podcast in the chizat. Usually in the it's chizat. Robin under that uh, under that login. Yeah. And it, this time it's Joey. So hi, Joey. What's up, Joey? I hope to meet you at some point. We don't really know Joey, so we hope to meet him at some point. What's up with this Joey that we don't know? <laughs> I don't Joey him. <laughs> Red, Red Robin hi. reseller, we have missed you. You've been missing for the past few shows too. So yeah. I do notice. I notice who's in the chat and who's not. I noticed when you're missing. <laughs> anyway, so is. we just had uh, this last week. We we had some fun stuff. We did our Wednesday show. Then we got to be uh, a guest on um, on Adam's show. And then we had our Friday No Pants Friday show mm -hmm. with Greg Dupage Pick Air. Now I do, we do want to say here start out the show. So Greg had uh, he he's a, he's a pretty awesome gift giver. Mm -hmm. And he had sent a package to us. We did not know a package was coming. So I'm going to go ahead and blame this on Greg. Okay. I'm just going to go ahead and blame it on Greg because I think it was Saturday morning. He's like, Hey, I forgot to ask you guys. Uh, I had sent a package and it was like delivered on like Wednesday. And so I'm sure it would have been awesome had we opened this package and, and shown off uh, the gifty contents um, on the actual show Friday night. But since we're terrible at going to get the mail and we usually are behind a few days, um, Vicky had actually gone out because she, you knew that there was a return waiting for you. And so she brought this right. package in like, like late Friday night and, and we both assumed it was the return turned out. It was actually, I didn't look at, I didn't look at yeah. the, you know, who it came from and that's my fault. Uh, but anyway, we would have, we would have yeah. showed it on, on, on the show on Friday night. Yeah. But. And I would like to say that Sandra, I think very early on, um, uh, just a little bit of foreshadowing uh, before the show even started, she said, got my hands down and finger up ready for the show and no, uh, pop rocket, Lisa, not the middle finger. We're talking about this finger right here. Okay. And, e and why are you going to give it all away? And hands down, finger up. It comes from foreshadowing. talking about that. I'm aware. Oh, foreshadowing. Yeah. Just hold on to, to, uh, your, your finger up, Sandra. Um, wait till you see what Greg sent. Cause it's pretty, 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 pretty awesome. Um, anyway, so what you want to show, you want to talk about what we got? Yeah. Yeah. What show, we got, what would we get? We got a fun little box with a bunch of little goodies in it. I thought it was sweet. Uh, clearly. So Greg, you are really a good gift giver. Again, I don't know why you're single. Cause like we're, we're clearly like your favorite people in the world, but even if we weren't, if you're like, if you're this thoughtful of a gift giver for friends, I can only imagine what you'd be like as a partner. So yeah. keep in mind, ladies, gentlemen, whatever. Uh, he's, he's pretty cool. So, so, all right. So first thing I got, uh, well, I think this could be for both of us anyway, a Skittles candle. I would also like to point out that for a reseller, Greg is an amazing packager. Yeah. Because there were some very uh, delicate yep. items in us and everything was, was packaged very well and very safely. Uh, all right. So we got Skittles. The Skittles candle. The Skittles candle. It's a green one. It's not lime, but I it's promise, a green candle. I, will, I promise right I won't try to eat it. Or and, um, and you know he's so thoughtful. So it comes to this little box and it's a glass base. It's like there's even like a little bit of like packing in there, there, so it doesn't um <laughs> it doesn't wiggle and break. So funny. Uh, that's pretty awesome. Okay, so we all know I like peacocks. Yeah. And I actually like vintage peacocks. And I'm not sure if these are vintage or not. Doesn't really matter because I'm not going to open them to find out. But um these really cool uh peacock playing cards that just have awesome. a real vintage retro vibe on the packaging um i really like those mm -hmm. <laughs> what's the voice pretty. you trying to be like me no <laughs> and then the other thing is this kind of odd but cool hand painted it looks hand painted anyway tin Peacock thingamabob. It's I guess I like can only call it. I could, it's got real feathers. I can only call it like a tchotchke because I don't know really what it, uh, it is other than it's supposed to just, you know, sit on a table or, or something like that. So I thought that's really cool. Yeah. Super anyway. cool. Now let's talk nice. about the real presents. Um, <laughs> so this one's awesome. I, I think we've talked about this before and I don't know if, if Greg heard, heard us talk about this or if this is just perfect timing. Um, but I've been talking about, Vicki has like four different Christmas trees. She has her peacock tree that's over there that she has up year round. And then she has, uh, you have the, the uh, 
Island of Misfits toys. Mm -hmm. Rudolph, Rudolph and, Misfit toys. True. And, then, and then you have your uh, snowman one that goes mm -hmm. down in, in kind of our TV room, photo, photography room. Mm -hmm. and then Which the, is all snowman and yeah. snowman ornaments, and it looks like the yeah. snowman the tree is. And yeah. then downstairs uh, is like a regular tree. And, and like last year, you know, she used to always put the Misfits tree in here, and, and last year she did again. Um, but this is really my office and that's not my thing. And I'm like, listen, if she gets to have four trees, I should be able to have one tree. Okay. Mm -hmm. And my one tree, originally I thought it would be like a horror tree, um, uh, with like horror ornaments and stuff like that. Cause I do have quite a few from different, like, um, like, uh, those boxes that I get delivered and stuff like that, like loot crate and stuff like that. Um, but, but then I realized like I have a really cool star Trek one. And then what Greg just sent me, it's how dare you, how dare you? You're so rude. Anyway, um, so really, I'm just gonna call it my geek tree, but I'm still gonna get a black tree, like a little tree, and I'm gonna put all my cool, like movie ornaments and television shows, whatever the stuff that I'm into. But so that brings us to this awesome ornament. It's the 25th anniversary. 25th, yeah, no, 20th, 20th ET uh, anniversary uh, ornament. It's really, really super cool. Um, I actually love this. It's one of those ones that you uh, you hook it into. And my Star Trek one by, lights up, by the way. Just saying. Um, it's like a little, little Star Trek shuttle. And uh, this one, take it out of here real quick. Uh, it's You actually plug it, you plug it right into um, the light, like the, the string of lights, the mini lights, and, and it'll light it up. And it's just like really cool E.T. in front of the moon. But this is a super awesome. I like it. A little bike thing. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm answering. While you're talking, I'm answering my question. I'm sorry. Is it too hard to be a part of the show? Weird. You know you love this. Hands down. Finger up. Thanks, Greg. Best ornament. Whatever. And uh, and then and then probably equally as awesome is the other the other little gift that he included in in uh, in this package for me. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and show this. Look how awesome this is. E.T. Christmas stocking. Now, the first thing Vicki said when she saw this was, you are not putting that up. <laughs> she says, you are, you <laughs> are Christmas decor. You are not putting that up in my <laughs> house on my Christmas mantle. That's how she talks now. Yeah. That is not going up in my house. Apparently, I'm just a guest here, you guys. So I'm going to go. And then I said, okay, well, I'm going to put it up on the wall in, you know, back behind. And she's like, where are you going to put it? <laughs> and you know what? This is my office, okay, guys? This is my office. I'm going to have my tree back here. Mm. I'm going to have my awesome ET stocking hanging up, okay? There you go. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, Greg, awesome presents. <laughs> I'm super, super excited. I'm going to bust this out and uh, put it. Now, we're, now we need to... Um, when do we start de de decorating for? It's like the day after Thanksgiving. Mm -hmm. Okay, we got to get my tree. We got to get then. your tree. Get my tree before that, so we can get that set up. Anyway, if you clean up your office, your tree might actually fit in it. You are so rude. I'm gonna have to break that down or move that like we do every year. Anyway, mm -hmm. you need to back it up, sassy. Mm -hmm. Back it up, sassy. <laughs> Casey <laughs> says, "Answer your phone." We can't answer the phone when we're on the air, star. I'm Thanks. Probably, well, he's probably saying that because he called like last night. Um, but uh, we were at a concert. Yeah, we were at a concert, and then when we came home, listen, we're really old guys. Uh, we came home by the time we got home and we were in bed, it was one one o'clock in the morning. You guys were probably still up partying, even mm -hmm. though you're on the East Coast. Um, and then I woke up at like five thirty, and this is what happens when so when I wake up at that early, I don't want to wake her up because if I wake her up, then she's just up. So first of all, I sneak I sneak out of the the bedroom and go to the guest bathroom so I can pee without waking her up because seriously she'll wake up real easy then i sneak back into bed and then i take my phone and i put the blanket up over my phone and turn because seriously any noise or light and she will immediately immediately wake up and then i'm in trouble and then she starts beating me yes that's what i do <laughs> that's really. what i do no she doesn't really get mad but so Kara she, says yeah. Dorothy had one for sale in her yard sale yesterday. Dorothy, we didn't even know Dorothy had a yard sale yesterday. Dorothy, what? She's terrible at letting her friends know these things. What? Because she didn't even mention. If I knew her. there was any ET memorabilia at that yard sale, I would have been there and I would have gotten it. How dare you, Dorothy? Mm -hmm. Anyway, all right. So, um, 
So now we've got to buy a black Christmas tree. Basically. Yeah, so I'm going to get a black Christmas tree. I'll probably put white lights on it. And then I'm going to put all of my, I have a bunch of really cool um, little like Halloween horror type, horror movie ornaments and stuff like that. So um, anyway, so let's get into uh, showing our numbers. Then we're going to show our numbers. And then we're going to show our, our sales highlights from this last week. And then we're going to get into our haul, which by the way, guys, we really Our didn't... haul is weak. We let's, didn't, let's just, we let's didn't just get say, to, we didn't call get to it do like it is. our normal sourcing this last week. Like I didn't go out on Thursday and then partially because of, you know, sales were down. I had some stuff here that I needed to, not really a death pile, but like 30 t-shirts. So I was like, I'll just take pictures of all of those. Um, and so then we did end up going out, was it yesterday to a couple places? Mm -hmm. And uh, I literally found one thing. Now this one thing is an amazing thing. It's one of my most exciting finds in a Sabres in forever. So I'm pretty excited about that. Um, but then I did realize that because we didn't have a show last week, I actually have a few things, uh, mostly that I got from uh, Barry. Barry had sold me some stuff. Um, so I actually do have some cool stuff to share. Just not, it's some of it's from the week before, but we didn't have a show. Same. So it's okay. Same. Some things from the week before and a couple of things from this week, neither of which we sourced very uh, much. I do have a bulk buy that I purchased from uh, someone that follows our show and follows me on Instagram. Um, but I think I'm going to do a separate haul video for that yeah. when it comes in. It's a vintage haul. Um, it was supposed to be here on Friday and um, basically FedEx messed it up and they scanned it as received at the yeah. point of drop off. So now I'm fighting to get the package, which has nothing to do with the with the nice lady who sold me everything. Um, it has to do with the FedEx in her town that I don't know where the package is now. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, so. Kara says she had a Christmas tree or she had two Christmas oh. trees, but we're in, we're either of them black. Cause I need like a little mini black one. That's yeah. What I need. Anyway. Um, all right. So you want to get into looking at our numbers real quick? Sure. Um, sure. Sure. Was, sure. All right. So let's, let me share the screen here. Um, I guess we'll just start with mine. So my, mine look okay for this week. Uh, um, you know, the couple weeks ago, the last time we did the show, I had an awesome week. And then, like I said, it, my sales went down like 50%. And then this week they've gone up about 50 from last week. Um, so this one, you know, at least we were, I was seriously going days without even an offer, which is not normal. Um, usually I have, even if I don't have a lot of sales, I'll get like nonstop, um, mm -hmm. messages and offers, offers even if they're, they're low balls, yeah. whatever. Same. Uh, anyway, so uh, so yeah, so I had 25 items going out on eBay, so not a whole lot, six on Etsy, um, so a total of 31 things sold, and uh, actually, I think, uh, eBay, I had like one order, it was two t-shirts, so 32 items, um, and so my eBay gross sales, $1,418.41, Etsy gross sales, um, $409.02, total gross, $1,827.43. My shipping was a little over 160. Um, my promoted listing fees um, and advertising fees between eBay and Etsy, $87.87. Um, so you can see my final value fees, my fees between those two stores. And so my total cost, $455. My cost of goods, roughly around $220. So that brought my total net down to $1,152. Um, my gross average sale price, $58.95. So I'm happy with that. I've been hitting 60 a couple times um, mm -hmm. recently, but as long as I'm above 50, I'm pretty happy. But it's always awesome when I hit 60. Um, and so my net average sale price, $37.17. So it was an all right week. Um, I'm ready for it to, to start moving up a little higher for uh, fourth quarter. I feel like I have a lot more listings than I did last year. Mm -hmm. I had better stuff than I had last year. Um, and I also had done sell similar, like ended tons of my stuff. So none of my listings are older than, than uh, three months old right now. So I'm really hoping to see some exploding sales here soon. That would be nice. That would be nice. What do you got going on? So this was decent. Like I said, the number of orders was not huge, mm -hmm. um, which I expect it to be a lot higher. I'm usually about 75 orders to 75 orders a week this time of the year. Uh, so my number is down, but my average sale price is higher. And I think that's what's saving my butt. Um, so I had 39 orders on eBay. I had five, uh, between Etsy and Bonanza. Well, I actually had Bonanza. no sales on Macari this week, but I also haven't listed anything new on Macari. So I, I have, my listing has been, uh, slower cause I've been doing a lot of changing things and listings. Yeah. So, uh, so a total of, uh, 44 orders. My eBay gross sales were was twenty two thirty eight, so let's call it twenty two thirty nine. 
my sales between Etsy and Bonanza, not Macari, have been it was four hundred and one dollars. So my total sales this week twenty six thirty nine forty three. So like twenty six forty round up. Why not? Um, so my shipping was two hundred and seventy eight dollars, which is a little high, but I did have a few international sales in there, so that explains that and jackets and things that were a little heavier. So my promoted fees or promotion fees, that is both my um, my advertising on Etsy and my uh, promoted listing fees on eBay, total of $72 and change. eBay, final value fees and Etsy. Uh, and that's also Bonanza is thrown in there too. Bonanza is about the same as Etsy and eBay. It's, it's I think it's maybe 1% difference. So mm -hmm. that might be off by about three or $4. Um, so my total cost 681.40. My cost of goods were rather low. I had some really good ROI this week for, uh, so my cost of goods 163. So my total net almost $1,800 this week after after rough costs. So I'm pretty happy with that. Average sale price 60 bucks, that's pretty good too. Um, and my total net is over $40. So I, I'm happy what? with my numbers this week. I just would like to be happier. I know that sounds like I'm being greedy, but the reality is, is I do 40% of my business in the last three months of the, of the year. So sometimes more than that. So I, I really was expecting October to be better than it has been. Right. Yeah. I hear you. Well, and it's like, and then there's a part where, you know, sometimes you have, uh, you know, people not paying. So like today yes. I actually have today, it's uh, you know, a little after two our time. Um, I'm already over like $350 in sales today, but that's two items and neither one of them have been paid for yet. Right. So uh, it's like I have to sit here and be like, well, it's, it's nice that my I have, I'm having a really good day. But um, am I really like, who knows? It's going to be I'm gonna seize. Bless All right. you. <coughs> Bless you. Usually comes in threes. Looks like we're just going to do two this time. Anyway, um, so I had a great day. I've had a great day of sales already. However, there's always a chance that uh, I had one person that offered me two hundred dollars for this jacket. I accepted. And then they started asking me all these questions, which makes me feel like maybe I won't get paid. We will see. Yeah, um, I did go ahead and send them an invoice after they had asked me their 500 questions. Um, I've had two small sales today, so my, I'm still under $100 for the day. Yeah, um, I've actually had a fairly slow weekend. My week was much better than my weekend has been. Yeah, my weekend's, so we'll been, my weekend's been all right. Again, as long as I uh, get paid for those those sales. Anyway, so let's go ahead and you want to go ahead and look at our uh, sales highlights. Yes, we actually are going to have more sales highlights than haul out highlights this week uh, because we did have some decent sales to share mm -hmm. with you guys and our haul is a little yeah. bit slim. So I have, I have, there's one item in mind that I actually sold the week before, but I really wanted to, since we didn't get to show them last week, I really wanted to be able to show this one item. So I had some good sales this week, so I didn't pull anything from last week to show. Yeah, I hear you. There's only one thing, just one thing you guys. Mm -hmm. That's all. And I know that some of you guys do follow me on Instagram. So sometimes I will duplicate what I've shown on Instagram throughout the week and what I've, what I show on the Sunday. So for those of you that I, see both. I do apologize. Mm -hmm. I do sometimes mm -hmm. do some highlights on Instagram, but I don't do all of it. So yeah. you're not seeing just duplicates in both, both locations yeah. for sure. Uh, kinetic girl. Thank you for blessing me. I appreciate it very mm -hmm. much. I see Pam in the chat, by the way, and Pam doesn't make it in here very often. So Pam, we miss you. What's up? Pam? What's going Pam's on? our buddy in, in, in Connecticut as well. And, uh, on the East coast, we'll get to see her at eBay open this year. We actually get to see her when we visited Rhode Island because yeah. her and Travis, the boyfriend and her son all came and drove like two hours to come and visit us in the middle of like a torrential downpour yeah. when we were in, in Rhode Island of nowhere. in the middle of nowhere at my friend's house where she knew nobody. Well, so it was, all it right. was really nice. So let's, uh, let's check this out. What do we got? Start with you. What do we got? So this was kind of a cool uh, sale. I actually took an offer on this for $60. Like, don't you love when a customer makes you a reasonable offer? Like it yes. was on sale for $69.97. I took an offer for $60. I think it is a butt ugly lamp. I paid about $5 for it, but I knew someone would like it, right? It sold like right away. It, it did. It sold within a week. Yeah. I hadn't even put it away yet. It was like on my uh on the table of stuff to go be sorted and put away in in, sh in my storage area and mm -hmm. it it sold pretty quickly it's really fugly i think but i think if you have the right decor it could work and that was why i kind of put tiki it's definitely mid-century it's it's probably 60s or 70s is when it was made um but it it's just an odd looking lamp yeah. i paid like three or four dollars for it Crazy. and it's really light because it's rattan and it was like, it was, I want to say it was probably like um, maybe 14 inches long or so. I'm sure the measurements are in there. But anyway, it was uh, about 14 inches long. It was under two pounds to ship. What the heck is rattan? 
It's bent wood. Oh, okay. Fancy. All right. My first one, I've got a number of t-shirts that I sold uh, this last week that I was pretty stoked about. Um, just to kind of show the kinds of, you know, I think a lot of people, it's like, you know, the obvious like uh, band shirts, you know, vintage rock t-shirts, vintage uh, sports t-shirts. There's certain things that's like, obviously that's going to sell for a lot of money. Um, I like some of this other stuff. This is a Monterey Bay Aquarium t-shirt uh, from the 80s. You can see that from the Hanes tag right there. It's an 80s Hanes tag, long sleeve. Uh, it was pretty nice. Like I, you know, I, I say pre-owned because I can't, I, I don't know for sure that's dead stock, but this one I was actually pretty sure is dead stock. It's like in perfect condition. Um, it doesn't really, the tag and everything, nothing looks like it's been washed before or worn. Uh, but a nice single stitch, long sleeve t-shirt, sold it for $48.99. That's right, $48.99 for an 80s t-shirt for Long from Monterey Bay Aquarium. But mm -hmm. I like to think, whenever I get this stuff, I like to think like, oh, maybe somebody that lives near there or maybe works at the aquarium or maybe they worked at the aquarium back in the 80s. And it's like nostalgic. Or... I actually, saw, I've been to Monterey Bay Aquarium and I sell everything that I've ever found. But I don't know what it is about that. Yeah. I found coffee mugs from Monterey Bay Aquarium that have sold for $30 and up. Yeah. And I don't get that at all, but. Yay. So it was pretty cool. It's pretty cool. Well, I remember there was that whale tank top that I had before and I sold that for 40 bucks. So, Oh really? The one, that, the one that I have? For the one sale, you have so. I don't know what's wrong with you. Maybe you should just give it to me. <laughs> um, all right. Next one for you. Look at this. We're going to bust out a bonanza. This is a bonanza sale. If those of you don't know about bonanza, bonanza is one of those things. It's like true gather. It's, um, it's free to cross post. It just syncs with your eBay listings. I do nothing. It's How zero. many years have you been on it? I've been on it for 10 years. And this is your number of transactions right here? Yeah. Yeah. So guys, about roughly about 12 times a year, you'll sell something uh -huh. uh, if you put all of your listings on Bonanza. So there you go. But she doesn't, you don't pay anything for it other than the fees after it's. After yeah. It, it, it doesn't cost anything. So it just yeah. imports your, your eBay listings. And uh, what it does is this is, this is the one that they, it actually ends your eBay listing yeah. when it sells. So, um, so you don't have to think about it, but you're not really going to be making any money. Right. Either. I don't, I don't, I do the free version. I don't pay for it. I'm not, you know, putting any effort into it. So it's just a little extra. Yeah. Um, so it sold for that price. You see there, 96 49. I paid about $4, $5 for this. I've had it for a couple of months. Um, I did sell it once before, so I may have shown it in a haul a few months ago, but the buyer never ended up paying. So, um, that sale did not stick this one. Mm -hmm. This one has been paid for. Nice. All right. So next one for me, we're good. Like I said, we got, I got a few t-shirts that I, I sold this week. Um, so this is just this, uh, cartoon t-shirt give me a break now this one i did call dead stock because i definitely i mean it, w when you uh, when it has like the folds in it and everything which i did actually steam them out but this one was definitely like a brand new t-shirt this might have been one of the ones i got from barry i got a couple i think you did from get barry, this one from barry. Uh, like this and uh anyway um i've had it for so i've had it for like i think a couple of months but i went ahead and sold it for the full sale price there 48.99 and it actually went to thailand so um, not only did I sell it for 50 bucks, uh, they paid shipping because it was not domestic. Um, and so I made a few extra bucks on top of that. So I made more money selling this overseas than I would have if I sold it domestic. So I was pretty stoked about it. Um, and just so you guys know, for anybody who hasn't like really been following us for very long, um, I kind of have like set price points that I do all of my like t-shirts at for like just the basic stuff that I, you know, and, and so this price is $69.99, but to be on sale for $48.99, I listed on Etsy for $47.99. Um, and then it's, you know, with the, with the expectation I'm going to get offers. So usually the ones I have priced at $48.99 like this, I'd like, I'd be willing to take 40 for, and so I'll go back and forth a little bit, depending on how long I've had it. I might go even lower, but anyway, next one for you. Uh, this was a nice Kappa jacket. Uh, that's not the price that it sold for. I did accept an offer on this for $95. I'd paid about $4 for it. I want to say I've probably had this in my inventory for almost a year. It's been a, it's been a minute. Um, so it's not a vintage. There's nothing, you know, certainly spectacular, but again, I'm one of those people I am, you know, well, Kappa is a very popular streetwear brand. I, Slow I don't know dime versus yeah. versus quick nickel. I will say this sold within a day of me refreshing my listing and changing the item specifics. Yeah. So I will say the majority of my sales this week have been items that I have fixed yep. or that have been newly listed. Yep. So again, I, I do realize that there are some people that have not been affected by this at all, but there is a predominant number of people mm -hmm. that have been. And if you have been, I do suggest taking a look at your listings and seeing what you can do to fix it. Um, so this sold for $95, buyer paid, 
And that's it. I paid about $4. Well, I know Lavender clothes on showed, she showed like some graphs and she was down like 80% from the previous week and she has like 3,500 listings. So that's just crazy. Mm -hmm. I think she's starting to bounce back now, but, um, but she did fix oh, every single one as well. I would like to point out that Sandra just got a sale on Etsy. Woohoo! Um, Sandra, I think you need ding, to tell ding, us ding, 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 what ding. you sold and how much you got for it. We, we, we want to know the deets pronto. So if you go ahead and put that up in the chat, it'd be great. Um, all right, so let's go to the next one for me. He had another t-shirt, guys. Here we go, $48.99. Again, sold this for the full, by full asking sale price, $48.99 for this. Um, this is actually the second t-shirt I've sold that's like this. Not the exact same one, but it's this uh, It's this one Australian. Yeah, it's this Australian um, uh, artist, Aboriginal artist that that uh, won this award in 92, 93. And I had actually had a different one before this that I also sold. That one I sold on Etsy. Um, and they were both new with tags. And I found them at different times, different stores. Um, and that one sold to Australia. This one actually sold to New Zealand. And so once again, sold the t-shirt for 50 bucks and they paid for shipping. Um, and so you made, made a little bit of money on the shipping. Exactly. So saved, saved on domestic shipping, made a little bit of extra money and fantastic but actually after i had shown that first one that i sold somebody had messaged me that or told me that they found one just like it and they were so excited because they only knew about it because of me and really it was just random that i picked it up so it's kind of cool um all right next one for you uh this is something that i this sold for the price you see there the sale price for 104.97 it was free shipping shipping but this was a fairly small box and I literally just secured and made sure the stuff wasn't rattling around inside of the box, taped it up and shipped it in its own box. And it went to California. Mm -hmm. So it shipped for about $8. Um, I paid $5 for this at a garage sale earlier in the spring, maybe around April or May. And I know we showed it in a haul. It could have been a little earlier than that, but I do believe it was spring. Um, so paid $5, sold for $105. I'm pretty happy with that. Yep. Uh, and then, so Sandra says that, uh, her Etsy sale was an eighties ski jacket and she sold it for $44 and 30 cents. So good job on that. Very exciting. Um, all right. Next one for me, I hope you guys remember the, the, um, sourcing show that I don't know if I showed these in the hall, but I know I showed them on one of our sourcing videos. Um, I found, uh, all these new with tags, um, rodeo shirts and they're like rodeo qualifier shirts. And they were all, they all say roughy on them. I don't remember what that means, but it's like some, I don't know, whatever event that they do. And uh, they all had different colored, um, they were all size medium, but they had different color embroidery right here. And so I've sold a few of them. Um, this one I sold for full, the full asking price, $97.99. Nice. And if you remember, I bought them all for $5 a piece. And I think I got like a total of like eight of them or something like that. So I bought them all for five bucks a piece and this one sold for a hundred bucks. So sweet. Um, sweet. So yeah, rodeo stuff always does well, guys. Vintage and newer. If it's like a cool shirt or a sweatshirt or t-shirt, um, if it's not vintage but it has really cool graphics, then I always pick it up. Um, if it is vintage, then for sure. Um, so this is this is actually these are two sales that I wanted to show and talk about here. Um, I, I did show them on um, Instagram as well, and I wanted to just let people know that. Um, good cashmere coats sell regardless of the brand name mm -hmm. and this is the time i sold two this same week the only two that i had as a matter of fact this particular one i had paid ten dollars for and i believe i took an offer for this one so it did sell for oh no this one sold for the 139.97 sorry um i paid ten dollars for it i've only had it listed less maybe a month maybe a month Okay. Um, and then this other one here, I have had listed a little bit longer. This one I took an offer for $100 on, and this I paid $2 for at an estate sale. Um, so again, neither one of them have a great name. There's not, they're not a brand name. They're not trendy. There's nothing fantastic about them. They just happen to be a hundred percent cashmere coats. Mm -hmm. And in my photographs are so not I, even spectacular. Let's be, I don't guys. know what you're talking we about. We all know my photos, know my photos what? are mediocre. I, mean, I love this gray jacket. Shut up ass. <laughs> so my photos are whatever they, I do my best and I don't obsess about them i take too many and i sell too many things for me to be obsessed about the photos mm -hmm. so between dana and i were both okay at photos and that's it that's good enough for me uh it's a good representation of what i'm selling so both 
I, I had $12 invested in these and they sold for $240 for the two. Um, That's awesome. They both shipped in uh, priority um, cubic bags. I shipped them in bags. So they shipped for about $8.92 each. They both went to the East Coast. Mm -hmm. uh, so Candace says, I just recently found a vintage pair of men's Pepsi Cola jeans, not finding any similar. Um, Candace, do you have access to Terapeak? Like, I don't know what level store you have um, on eBay, but Terapeak is awesome because we get it for free with, I think it's, is it a basic store and above? I'm not entirely mm -hmm. sure. Um, but it will show you solds for the last 12 months. And so that helps a lot. Um, I know you probably don't have access to worth point, but, uh, and the other thing you can try to do is just look up, like, just look up Pepsi, like vintage Pepsi jeans, like take out the cola and just search, uh, just Google it. And sometimes you'll be able to see like listings on other platforms and stuff like that that can sometimes help you. But if you can't find the exact same ones, then don't worry about it and try to like just come up with a comp uh, on something like somewhat similar. So, all right. So next I have this Makita Tools sailing jacket. I call these sailing jackets. They're kind of like those, um, those yachting jackets. Uh, that's kind of just the style that I call them. Um, and, uh, this particular one is this Makita Tools 25th anniversary. So it's from 1995. These jackets in general, I feel like they sell pretty well. And especially when they have like a company um, that for whatever reason might be popular. And I feel like anything tool related, I guess, uh, seems to do well. Um, yeah, Makita Tools, Mac Tools, all that stuff goes sells well. Yeah. And so I have this listed. I honestly have this listed for maybe a couple of days. I just listed it this last week and it sold right away. Uh, for the sale price, I wanted $69.99. So um, I was pretty happy about that. I actually just picked up another one of these. I'm not showing it in the hall because it's nothing like super exciting, but I just picked up one yesterday um, for Michigan. Um, uh, it was a Michigan State. I can't remember which one's the one that's burgundy. I don't, I don't know. know. I'm terrible at that stuff. But anyway, Michigan's blue. But I was Michigan. So which one's blue? Michigan's blue and gold. Oh, maybe it is a blue one. I don't know. I don't remember, guys. Sorry. Next one for you. Again, here's my great photos. <laughs> I, I'm not good at taking Listen, photos of black. It, I just think it's really cool items. that you have different colors for people to choose from. <laughs> just shut your face. <laughs> <laughs> I took an offer for these. I did sell these for $105. I picked them up in a bulk purchase, so I paid about $4 for them. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Good story. Mm -hmm. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Offer for 105. They're lightweight. Yeah. North Face you know. is a good brand. Be careful when it comes to uh, jackets, especially because um, they it is a brand that gets faked a lot. Um, so you got to kind of look for some of those telltale signs that something is, you know, North Face is usually really high quality. And I've come across a couple of fake North Face jackets that once you kind of more closely inspect them, you start to see how bad the stitching is. <clears throat> the one thing about North Face is if they have all of the tags in them, all of their tags have their style number and mm -hmm. you can Google by style number. Yeah, for sure. All right. Um, next one for me. So this is, you know, it's kind of a boring jacket. Air Force, it's, it's not vintage. It's just an Air Force, uh, United States Air Force jacket. You can see the tag even says Air Force made in China, just a basic leather bomber jacket. Um, haven't had it listed for, well, I probably had it listed for probably like four or five months at least. So yeah, I've had it listed for a while. Um, it sold for full price, $139.99. Um, the other day. So I was pretty happy about that because I hadn't had like a, a higher dollar amount sale in a little bit. So uh, that always makes me go, whew, maybe it'll be a decent day um, when you have like at least one decent size sale like this. So Especially when you wake up to them or they come in before like 7 a.m. I'm like, whoo, it's a good morning. I swear whenever that happens, though, it's like it ha you you get a, a, a handful of sales like before 7 a.m. and you're super excited about how crazy your day is going to be. And then you have no more sales for the rest of the day. And then you end up just having an okay day. <laughs> uh, yeah. Know. You know what, Bonnie? I'm sorry. It's, it's, you know, Katie is definitely the photo guru. She's very good at getting very consistent uh, pictures and very good, clear representation of colors. Yeah. Um, I am not as good. I have learned her tricks and she's told me how to do she's it. She's resistant, still, you guys. No, I still try. I just suck at it. So but it's, it but, is what but it the, is. that whole issue with the, with the black looking blown out in gray that's because somebody who i won't mention who has pink hair does not like to use the brightening and darkening i feature still on the phone. use them they do not come out that's well. not that's okay then i need to stand there and watch while you do it because there's no way <laughs> it's it's not it's, all right once you figure it out you can do it very Fight quickly me. very quickly 
Um, it says, I, I do actually do not spend a ton of time on pictures, even though people might think that I just have a system set up to where, how I do it. Um, all right, next for you. Uh, these I showed in our hall when we were in Phoenix. I picked these up when we were in Phoenix. I did pay up for them. I paid $25 for these, but I took an offer for $175 and they have paid and they are going out. And I was pretty happy to sell Skechers for $175. Now, not all Skechers will sell for that much and not all Shape Ups will sell for that much. It's a very specific kind. It's always these work Mm -hmm. shape up work shoes. Awesome. And crazy. All right. This is a uh, moving on to Etsy for me. Um, this one I just sold, uh, later in the day on Friday. And usually I don't ship on Saturdays, but, uh, this person, you know, they, they, they bought it and then they sent a message. I mean, they probably should have messaged me beforehand, but whatever. They put a message in their purchase, basically saying, I need this for Halloween. I paid for priority shipping. If it can't get here by Halloween, please let me know so I can cancel my order. Uh, but I responded to the, back to them right away. And I said, you know, I don't normally ship on Saturdays, but uh, I'd be happy to put this out there tomorrow, um, especially since they paid the extra for it. And Lord knows I needed the sale. Um, and so it, I was actually pretty happy about this. And it's funny because we don't, um, our, our mail lady, who's super, super awesome, she doesn't uh, usually work on Saturdays. And so I was, you know, and we were out and about. And so I was concerned about it getting, um, actually getting picked up like it was supposed to. And so then we came back home, the package had disappeared. But of course, unlike our awesome mail lady, the replacement never scans. So then I had to wait for hours for it to finally scan. And I'm like, okay, finally. Um, but anyway, I sold it for $47.99. And then I think Etsy, the way I have Etsy set up, it charges them like eight something um, for priority shipping. But since I have to get the, the label through Pirate Ship, it's $7.55 for a, priority label. So it was great. Mm -hmm. Domestic sale. Didn't have to pay for the shipping like I normally would. And it's supposed to be getting to them tomorrow on the 28th. So they're going to be happy because they got it just in time for Halloween. But it's just really cool. The Nathan's famous uh, hot dogs t-shirt that I really haven't had for very long. So I was pretty happy to sell it so quick. That was a cool one. Mm -hmm. It's got a cool graphic. And it's super soft, thin and soft. I so this, this, I love this jacket. I picked this up initially thinking it was women's because I purchased it at a women's clothing sale and they didn't have any men's clothing there. But it was uh, like it was a huge warehouse sale and it was all women's. Um, but I paid five dollars for this and I got it home and realized the buttons were on the side. It was men's, you know, but I didn't realize it when I first grabbed it. I just thought it was a really cool print and pattern. So you um, lucked out. I lucked out because actually big Aztec print clothing sends, sells better for men than it does for women. Mm -hmm. um, so I picked this up, listed it, and sold it about 14 hours after I sold it. Um, I, I had a buyer offer $150. After you listed it? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Well, you said 15 hours after I sold it. Oh, I 15 hours after I listed it. Sorry. <laughs> 15 hours after I listed it, someone offered me $150. I was very, they asked me one question. They asked if it smelled like cigarette smoke or anything like that. And um, uh, it doesn't. So, I, you know, and I'm pretty, honest, awesome. I'm definitely honest brain. about that kind of stuff. Uh, so it, again, the brand doesn't matter a lot. Neiman Marcus, of course, is a high end company and, and this is a very well-made mm -hmm. jacket, but Neiman Marcus itself is not a yeah. name that sells clothing. It just happens to have, uh, some nice, it, it's just nice yeah. graphic. It's a nice heavy weight. It, it would have sold coat. anyway, based on the, the, the design, the fact that it's vintage. Yeah. So um, I paid five bucks for it. Yeah. Very, very um, nice. <clears throat> and it sold for 150 and buyer left me glowing feedback. So their only question was, does it smell like cigarettes? I said, no. <clears throat> Sorry. My throat's got a little tickle in it. You guys, <clears throat> my apologies. Anyway, uh, so my next one, maybe you guys recognize this sweater. So I actually Pretty. bought two of these. I bought two of these at the Buffalo Exchange. Uh, and really, I haven't had them for very long. I, it's been like maybe a month tops. Mm -hmm. I don't even think it's been a month. Um, I bought two of them. They were, um, they're both the same size, XL. Just awesome. They were, they were priced at $24 each. I grabbed them so quick. I'm like, these are definitely going to sell during the holiday season. And now they've already both sold. And so they both sold now. Um, and both of them sold on Etsy. Um, so I guess you snooze, you lose eBay. I don't know what's going on over there, but I sold both of these. Um, they both sold. Now it says $174.99. Both of them sold dirt while I was having a 10% off sale. So it really ended up being about $150. Um, so they each sold for 150 bucks, guys. So I made $300 after paying $48 for them um, total. 
uh, so yeah, it's like, it doesn't have to be, um, you know, when you think of polo and stuff like that, you think you have to see like the polo bear or you got to see like a spell out. It's got to mm -hmm. be really obvious that it's polo Ralph Lauren. Uh, and that's just really not always the case. And in this case is really awesome lambs wool sweater. Um, they go for a lot of money. And did so you, did you like, um, you didn't put all of my sales up. Did you, you curtailed? I don't know what you're talking about. I put all yours up. You I'm not done yet. I know. I can see which ones are up there though. I'm just telling you, you don't have. Okay. All well, then, I did not purposely uh, you miss did any not of yours. Put my Etsy sale, my good Etsy sale. That's all right. I didn't see an Etsy sale from you, but we can go look for it. Mm -hmm. Are you, I don't know you guys. Yes. Let's look. We're breaking up. Um, <laughs> let's see here. We'll go. You want me to, you want to go look at it right now? Yes. LV pink. I'm pretty sure maybe you forgot to send it, but I could be wrong. You are wrong. It's very possible that I'm wrong. So let's look at LV pink peacock. Let's go down in case you guys ever want to go look at, at our stores. This is how you see it sold. So this is her, uh, her storefront and you scroll on down here and you hit the sales and they're in order. Um, so the last thing she sold was this hat. What did you want to show? The sweater. The sweater. Okay. So let's look at this. See, that wasn't so hard. <clears throat> I'll click on this again. And so guys, if you ever want to go and look at our solds on Etsy, this is basically what you do is you go click on it. And see my fantastic fuzzy, <laughs> fuzzy picture. <laughs> yeah. I mean, hey, uh, it looks even better from far away. <laughs> I don't oh, know what happened. Even better. They were all bad. I think this There's, was when I there was something wrong with oh, my camera. There you go. Remember, I had you come in and like, why yeah. is my camera not focusing? I get it. There was something wrong with the camera. If you guys can't see me right now, it's because I'm doing air quotes. <laughs> um, anyway, look, the back is equally as fuzzy, so I guess it's just the sweater. Um, all right, <laughs> you're an ass. <laughs> what do you want to tell us about this? So I picked this up at the same sale that I picked up that southwestern jacket at. I paid five dollars for this uh listed it and this <clears throat> sold on etsy about 48 hours after it was listed maybe less nice and it sold for Do -do -do -do. what 150 plus the buyer paid shipping because it went to canada 150 wah, wah, wah. we're gonna find out right now guys if i'm the one that uh Oh, I see. That's the one thing I didn't see. You're right. It was the very first thing. Here's what she did, though, guys. I'm going to blame it on her because she sent me like one link to her um, mm -hmm. her Bonanza sale. And then it was like 45 minutes later, she sent me all the other stuff. So it was very, it wasn't a link. She just had typed out to to look at the sweater. So I just really like the sweater. She did send I wanted... it to me. It was my mistake, but I'm still going to blame it on Vicky because... Because, hashtag Vicky ruins everything. Yeah. Okay. So do I get to do my one more thing or do you yeah, have one you more still, thing? What are we doing can, here? You can still do your other one. All right. Uh, let's see. Close that sucker. There we go. Okay. So this is another one that I showed on our Phoenix haul. Purchased this when we were with Teresa and the, uh, the other ladies in, um, in Phoenix. Mm -hmm. This jacket, God love it. It is the ugliest freaking scarecrow, Laura Ingalls. I don't even know. This ugly, ugly, plain oversized baggy it looks like a scarecrow potato sack i don't really understand it but this particular brand is one you definitely want to look out for it was in the costume section when i understand why because someone looked at it and went that looks like it should be worn by someone who's trying to be a female scarecrow i don't really know uh but i paid f maybe three or four dollars for it it was uh 50 off tag and it's i took an offer for it it's this has been uplisted for maybe two weeks mm -hmm. um a lot of watchers a lot of interest and i took an offer for it and sold it for 185 dollars 185 dollars what yeah it's ridiculous what are you doing uh i accidentally closed this out so i was just trying to get it oh get it up before okay so yeah 185 dollars. i was like yeah i'll i'll take that all day long all day long what about at night will you take it at night i would i would take it at you night would? too mm -hmm. okay i'm just making sure are you you're done making people yeah okay i'm done all right so uh let's go ahead and close this out and then my last one right here is um this so this is the one thing that sold the previous week but i really wanted to show it because this might not be something that maybe i mean i'm sure some of you would pick this up but maybe others wouldn't necessarily i don't know but this style of jacket um, this particular one is Sears. Um, 
but this style of jacket is kind of hunter, uh, you know, Mackinac cruiser type wool jacket. These are very, very popular and these sell really well. And I feel like they get undersold all the time. People list them for way too cheaply. And this one I've really only had listed for maybe a couple months tops and that's during the summertime. And so, um, you know, if you've come across any of these now, you should definitely be grabbing them, but it's just a really cool seventies Sears wool jacket. And let's see what I sold it for. Lumberjack serial killer jacket. I'm Elmer Fudd jacket. I think mm -hmm. other than the fact that you can't use Elmer Fudd in the title, I like lumberjack serial killer for sure. There you go. There you go. Mm -hmm. All right. So $150 guys. So you should definitely be picking these up and quit underselling them. So why are you looking through your pictures? I'm there? looking What's going through on? photos because I wanted to, some people are talking about what are they going to be for Halloween if they're dressing up. We're not really doing yeah. anything, but I wanted to uh, show, I saw Candace had said that she's going to be Rosie the Riveter for Halloween. And I wanted to show, I was, I've been Rosie a couple of times. Can mm -hmm. I even focus on that? Can you focus? Can you focus? I don't know. Can you even see that? I've been Rosie a couple of times. Yeah, I don't know. I like Rosie the Riveter. Anyway, uh, I don't even know if you can see that, but that's a pretty cool costume. Very nice. Very nice. All right. So uh, do you want to go ahead and do a little, a little bit of all business? Sure. A little, sure. A little bit of our whole stuff. Do you want to start? Yeah, you can start. You want me to start? Sure. Okay. So most of my stuff, like I said, I literally found one item. Wait, wait, wait. Hold, hold the presses. We got yes. hip flipping mama. Okay. Kelly popping in to say hi. All right. Hi, mama. Haven't seen What's you in a while. Mama? What's happening? Mama. <laughs> all right. Weird. Wait, like that? Um, anyway, all right. Let's go ahead and let me move this stuff over here. But like I said, I only found a single thing this week, and I'm going to go ahead and save that for the very last thing because it is pretty awesome. I was pretty excited about it. Um, but I did get some cool stuff the previous week from Barry. I was hanging out here. I was working. Barry sent me a message. And he's like, hey, what's up? I just, uh, he's like, I just did like a, a big bulk buy. And I thought I'd come by and let you get first dibs on stuff. And so um, we negotiated some pricing. And he came over and I basically shopped out of the trunk of his car. So that was pretty awesome. It's and nice when they come to you. I know, right? I'm like, I could do this all day long. Oh, and wait, so wait, wait. We got Rita. Rita in the house too. Rita, we haven't what? seen you in forever, honey. <laughs> Sorry. I keep interrupting Katie. So rude. Sorry. Where's the, where's the note? No, stop interrupting me. I'm just kidding. Um, anyway, what's up, Rita? Whoops. What's happening? What's happening? Okay. Uh, yeah, so I got some cool stuff uh, from him. And then we'd also gone and done a little bit of thrift shopping. And so um, I'll just show you a few of the items that I got. I think. I think I picked this up at the thrift store, but um, how awesome is this? Sweet? This one's pretty cool. This one does not have disgusting body odor, which is like shoving in my face. Well, this has Lord. literally been washed like three times. It's soaked. It got some. It smells treatment. nice and clean, actually. Thank so you. it should be nice and clean. 1990 body glove. Um, look at that amazingness. Beautiful. Anybody wants to mm -hmm. go and uh, live the life of a surfer, live the nomad life sleep on the beach and uh hang out in your body glove tank top yeah it's pretty nice pretty nice um now this next t-shirt um this is kind of like uh you know my whole if you have time go look in the women's section because um i found this especially for um salvation army at least the one here mm -hmm. uh i found some really it's like i won't find anything in the men's and then i'll go over to the women's t-shirt section and i don't i don't look through everything because i can't it's like i can't go through all the women's stuff they have so much and uh but i'll go through and scan for the telltale signs of a vintage shirt and this is like almost dead stock it might be brand new um it is a campfire las vegas really awesome baseball tee now campfire originally i think it was a campfire, campfire girls, girls. Mm -hmm. um, but in the seventies, like in the mid seventies, they opened it up and it, it's just, it was, you know, it wasn't just girls anymore. So pre like 74, 75, it was campfire girls. Uh, but this is from the eighties. So this would be for boys and girls. Um, but just kind of like a, a kid's organization that you like, um, you know, I think it's like outdoorsy stuff, mm -hmm. but you can see this tag right here, this Velva sheen, this is like a, a you know, early mid eighties tag. Um, and just a really awesome style of baseball tee. So I was super excited it's, about that. It's cool. It's got a cool graphic on yeah, it. I so like that one. And I, I just like the coloring. I like that. What's it called? Is that like a, the heathering or whatever? Um, kind of like a, you have heather gray. Is that what is it called? Heathering? 
Yeah. Heather. Things like that. Actually, Jinx, thank you for popping into the chat. Uh, the other night when you said you purchased a Scooby-Doo shirt, I thought you were talking, that, saying that you'd purchased something from Greg. Yeah. I did get your purchase. Thank you. I appreciate that. Um, I'll be shipping it out tomorrow. Tomorrow's mm -hmm. Monday. So, uh, yeah, it did come through. I didn't realize that it was that it was you until I saw yeah. uh, your comment at, after the show. So thank you for that. Yeah. Um, so I'm terrible and I don't remember if I got this one from Barry or not. This one, it had to go through some serious treatments. It got soaked for 36 hours. I did some bleaching on it, but, uh, it's a, it's got quite some fate, a lot of fading going on as well, but it is such Ooh, an it's awesome the Flintstones. all over print universal studios and Florida, the Jetsons Flintstones. Oh, it is the Jetsons. I didn't even realize that. I'm so dumb. I need to go back and update my listings. Flintstones and the um, Flintstones Jetsons. and the Jetsons. I was just paying attention to the Flintstones part. Uh, but anyway, all over print. Got some nicely faded. Yellowing on the sleeves, but in general. Well, I know. That's what I was saying. I did quite a bit of bleaching on it. but So it's pretty faded. And so I put in the listing. It's faded and discolored. But you know what? It probably doesn't really mm -hmm. even matter because it's just such a cool shirt. Single stitch. Um, but yeah, beautiful. I love the Universal Studios stuff. And then you add in Flintstones and apparently the Jetsons, which I didn't even notice because I'm dirt. Um, yeah. And this show. boy Elroy. You don't remember? I loved that show. I know. I like. I like the show. Um. Anyway, last thing I have here, uh, tank top. This is Bullfrog Amphibious Formula Sunblock. And if you notice on the back, is this puffy? Oh, it is puffy. Yeah, we've got this awesome frog puffy who's paint. riding on his inline skates. Now, I did not when I listed it. I did not say rollerblades because that is a brand. Um, and so you want to be careful about using brand names uh, when it's not appropriate. So those are not rollerblades because I don't know if rollerblade pays attention to uh, um, pulling listings, but that's how you can get a Vero is by doing something like assuming that rollerblades would, would apply for this, but no, they're inline skates. Um, anyway, let me say thank you to Caffeinated Christy, $2 super chat. She says, love you girls. Thank you for inspiring us resellers. I like the little, I like her little jack-o-lantern there. So we got a little super chat, super chat, she's super chatty, yeah, oh, wee, don't be so bored with the super chat song, it's so awesome, woohoo, yee, -hee. <laughs> weirdo, you like that? I did see earlier up in the chat, the girls, uh, one of the girls or both of the girls, Vasquez Vintage asked if you were having any luck selling on, or if you were selling on Instagram yet. Um, no, I've not sold anything on Instagram, but that is going to take. It Instagram is not a selling platform uh, in and of itself. Mm -hmm. um, it is a tool that you can use to hopefully sell on. I there's so so it's not the same as like listing on. They're killing eBay. it, by the way. Vasquez Vintage. No, that's awesome. If you, follow, if you follow them on uh, on Instagram, but yeah, I'm, yeah, I see yours. I see you. I see your yeah, sales. Yeah. You guys are killing it. So uh, well, yeah, and so so but the but the whole thing with Instagram is it's not the same as like eBay or any other platform where you oh you list some stuff and now people are they're shopping to buy from you. It's like I have to take the time to build up an audience. I, ha I already had a following over over a thousand people, but that was when I originally was building up that Instagram. I was using like this. I, I will be honest. I was using one of those bot things that you're technically mm -hmm. not supposed to use, where it automatically follows different accounts and unfollows them and does like this pre kind of spammy. It, it, this was like two over two years ago. That I was doing that, and then I stopped. So it's got. I'm, I'm being followed by a lot of old accounts that mm -hmm. don't necessarily want to buy anything from me. Right, um, right. So it's going to take a lot of time, but I have been religiously every single day working on it, on working it. it. She's so working I gotta, it. I got to build that up. I got to build it up with more organic followers and people who are potentially going to want yeah. to for me. So Sandra asked, um, do I still have luck selling vintage hard rock cafe shirts? Uh, it depends. So I have a love for vintage hard rock cafe clothing. Um, it doesn't sell for a ton, but it almost always sells. Yeah. I tend to price it really high knowing that I'll eventually sell it and I'll just wait out the rest of the trash. So, um, because I don't buy the ones that are in poor quality. So I have sold them. It really, it depends it, on where it's from. If it's yeah. like a New York or Boston or one of the more popular ones that there are yeah. a bazillion out there. You only get the ones that are like, in, have something interesting. Or... Yeah. They tend to be interesting or they're from an interesting location. Mm -hmm. That's what I, that's what I try to focus on. Yeah. So yes, sure. I do still sell them, but don't expect to sell it super fast. Mm -hmm. That's yeah. Yeah. Mask is vintage. Uh, just wonder because your items are highly soft or people search the hashtags for your vintage streetwear. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's definitely been growing and, and I also need to start using, 
um, start playing around with using like Facebook ads and stuff like that and doing more advertising stuff. But I kind of want to build up the, um, I, would, I want to build up the profile a little bit more before I start putting money into that. So mm -hmm. we'll see. We'll see. Um, and I'm still trying to decide because I, I I know in the past I've said like, oh, I don't need to show myself um, because of the kind of stuff that I'm selling when it comes to that account. But then I'm as I'm like paying more attention to other streetwear sellers on Instagram, they do talk a lot about the importance of having yourself in it. So it's like I'm still kind of grappling with that and trying to figure out if I want to put more of my personality into the profile or not. I don't know. We'll see. Do you want to go ahead and show some of your stuff now? Sure. So, um, let's see, I did pick these up at, um, at a savers and I paid $5 for them and I'm okay with that. Uh, this is vintage nineties Escada. Um, so designer Escada, can we see the tags here? The black, black label. There you go. They are, uh, suede, suede pants. Actually, I might've gotten these in Phoenix. I don't know. I'm sorry. I don't really remember where I got them, to be honest with you. But I know that I paid about $5 because the tag was uh, just taken off. So they're this super, super soft, buttery suede. But there are these high-waisted, you know, you can tell because the long butt, the long pocket, <laughs> high-waisted women's uh, pants. So they're like a, they're, they're five pocket. They're made like jeans. And then they have this little accent on the inside of the leg that, you know, so they look like riding pants. Mm -hmm. and tapered uh tapered ankles so i paid about five dollars i think i have them listed for around a hundred or so because there is a couple of small flaws there's like a couple of spots on them and i'm not going to try to spot clean this butter uh suede it would cost too much for me to dry clean them and i don't want to ruin the pants by trying to clean them myself so i do mm -hmm. have them priced accordingly but they're really nice i think they would look fantastic on the person with the tiny waist uh, that could wear these. Grab a cheap, so they're cheap, really pretty. Like Sursa Viscata. They're honestly, if I if I could describe to you how soft this suede is, it's like butter. Like butter. Um, so I love them. Uh, the other thing that I have is that I have this pair of pants. These were actually given to me. I had a, a friend that gave me a whole bunch of stuff to sell um, with no expectation. And these were given to her. So she has no money invested in them, but they have a $3,000 price tag. These were made in the nineties. They are a custom pair of uh, vintage heavy leather rock, rocker pants. So like these are stage, this is stage wear. These were made for a rock star. And look, a corset um, for your balls. Yes, that's nice. <laughs> but, um, either a man or a woman can wear this type of pants. Oh, okay, sorry. Uh, but yes, of course, if, if you're lady if, if I'm talking about stage wear, it's generally a super skinny rocker dude, right? So, uh, and they're tiny. These are a chocolate brown leather, and they are fully lined. And then they come with the unhemmed uh, bottom. So people will either cut them to where they need them to be. So they're real long. They're like a 36-inch inseam. Yee. So these are fantastic pants. I have them listed, I think, for like 400 bucks right now. And I've sold similar pants for that. Um, they're just not by any custom designer that anyone would know. So it's not the name and the label are not going to sell them. But they are beautifully made and beautifully constructed. They're just teeny tiny. Mm -hmm. Um Connecticut girl likes it, likes to hear about corsets for balls. Like you're saying, ridiculous, <laughs> ridiculous. Uh, um, I did get this at a garage sale. So this is one of the nicer St. John brands. When you want to look for St. John clothing, you want to look for St. John evening is one of the higher end. And it's, this is a, uh, just a blazer and it's with these beautiful silver tone, uh, buttons, but it also has like silver, metallic threads all throughout this this little blazer jacket type thing i paid ten dollars for this um it's a size two it's small it will actually take a bit to sell but i think i can get about 150 dollars mm -hmm. for it crazy um and i got that at a garage sale and the customer that i bought it from or the woman that i bought it from actually i gave her my business card at her last garage sale her and her best friend love to love to source. They don't sell online. They source they all sell year a long. Bit online, but they so they get the eBay game, but they just don't have the time. Yeah, they source. They, like they just shop. like to shop. So they buy stuff super cheap, and they do it all year long. And they're allowed to have two garage sales a year mm -hmm. in their area. And the last one I went to, I bought a ton of like misook and stuff like that. And I, I did very well because their prices are very reasonable. Mm -hmm. And I gave her my business card because we started talking when we were there. And uh, she called me 
two days before the sale and let me have a preview and wanted me to come and shop first. So very it nice, pays to have nice. business cards. It pays to it tell does. people what you do. Uh, Verena Kruger saying hello from Canada, eh? Hey. She says, sorry, I'm late. <laughs> <laughs> Not really. <laughs> Hi, Marina. Uh, okay, so, oh, and we get Angie. Angie hasn't been here in a bit. Hey, Angie, what's up? We're pretty good. We hope you're doing well, too. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I picked this up just this week. This is one that I picked up this week. This is a vintage um, made in England. Hand knit. It's like they call these these fisherman sweaters. This is like a cardigan fisherman sweater. Very this cool. heavy wool um, ivory sweater. It's in great condition. I paid seven dollars for this. I think I'll list it for about a hundred. I haven't listed it yet. Fancy. And then I picked this up from that same garage sale that I got the uh, St. John jacket for. I paid seven dollars. This is an Eileen Fisher uh, textured open front blazer. And I have this listed for about 75 right now. So Candace says, I've wanted to hand my business cards to plus size women. And hubby says, no, I'm fat. I wouldn't be offended. Well, I mean, it, I mean, are you going to be handing them to them and say, hey, I noticed you're plus size. Will you take this card and give me your stuff that you don't want anymore? I'm pretty sure you can probably just say, uh, if it's casual conversation, just say that you're a reseller and you're always looking for um, people who are like offloading anything from their closet, you probably don't have to tell them that you're giving it to them precisely because you they're plus sized. They're plus I wouldn't size. say anything about that. Yeah, personally, because you know you will find the one person that you'll offend. Um, but yeah, if you see a plus size lady who's who's dressed kind of fancy and some nice clothes. and has nice clothes, then yeah, I, I you you want to sell them clothing. Okay. Uh, see, I don't sell. I don't give cards to people in order to sell them my stuff. I give cards in order to buy stuff from them. Mm -hmm. So uh, look at it a little bit differently. So if you find a, you know, you see a plus size woman that maybe has great clothing, that's the person that you want, or even yeah. somebody you know. Um, and also don't be afraid to advertise on your own Facebook and say, this is what I do for a living. Uh, you know, if you're cleaning out your closets, if you're doing the Marie Kondo mm -hmm. method, please feel free to drop off all your stuff to me yeah. if you're going to donate. And then you just cherry pick. You can always redonate yeah. what, what you don't want to list because I do that. See, I have friends grab a cheap, cheap. You need to hit up uh, your Mary Kay, your uh, Mary Kay ladies who are directors and uh, see if they want to sell you some clothes on the cheap, on the cheap, cheap. <laughs> yeah. So when you, so if your business is called plus size sales shop, you don't need to even address it. It's going to be addressed right on the card. So you hand them a card and say, I, I think you have a fantastic style and I would love to, uh, if you ever feel like cleaning out your closets, let me know. I would love to take a look at what you're about to donate. Mm -hmm. You can say it that way. Yeah. Um, I would never problem with that. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Just like I'd freak out if someone said, yo ass is big. Check out my site. <laughs> yeah. I feel like there's ways it can be said. <laughs> I'm pretty sure she wouldn't say it like that. Angie. Uh, all right. Oh my goodness. Okay. 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 Uh, that's good for me for now for clothing. Oh, I got, I'll do one more. I'll do my one pair of shoes that I picked up this week. I did pay $8 for these. This is one of those, um, if you don't know, if you don't know. So these are by Clark's and these are the, this is the Wallaby brand of Clark's. They Very have cool. this, um, this kind of rubbery spongy sole. So one of the things I want to make sure that you know, when you're looking for these, make sure that you do a test on them because the soles crumble. Okay. So what, uh, they're Clark Originals. They're called Wallaby style, but these particular ones are called like desert boots and they sell really well. So I think I'll probably sell these for about 75 bucks, even though they're used. There you go. Yeah. My turn. Your turn. Okay. Um, so I've gotten a couple of cool sweatshirts from Barry. Um, this one I love. Uh, I just like the colors on it and stuff, but it's uh, Super Bowl. Is it 1990? Yeah, it's 1990 Super Bowl 25. Um, and it must have been like for like a viewing party or something like that because it does say the golden nugget down the sleeve. Mm -hmm. uh, but it is a fantastic. Um, oh, that was when they could still call it the Super Bowl and not the big game. We can't advertise Super Bowl anything here. It has to be called the big game. What are you talking about? Tell us. Tell me more. 
anything in Las Vegas, uh, there is always viewing parties for the Super Bowl all over all the big casinos. Why? Because it's like a trademark name. Super Bowl is trademarked. They have to call it the big game. Why would they care? They're trying to get people to come and watch their show. I'm just telling you. And get eyeballs on their advertising. That's like the most asinine thing I've ever I don't know why. Nate, are you still in the chat? You'll know what I mean. That's true, right? That's crazy. That's crazy. Anyway, fantastic uh, sweatshirt. This is actually one. It had a couple of yellow spots on it. I used my handy dandy um, bleach pen, and it worked fantastically to get those spots out. It works really well on sweatshirts, especially. Um, but yeah, so it's a great one. And then I, I did have, see the uh, comment in there. Yes, I know that that's a crepe sole, um, Heartland. I'm sorry. I was trying to describe it as to what it was visually. Uh, so yes, it's like it is a crepe sole. Um, mm -hmm. I will put that in the title and description. But I was trying to describe what it looks like and feels like when I was telling people what it is. It's like this rubbery, bendy sole. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I can get it like, you know, so Greg says, same here, big game and less licensed by the NFL. Now, I get it like if they're selling stuff. So, for instance, that sweatshirt, um, I mean, I don't know if they were licensed to put out a Super Bowl sweatshirt for Super Bowl. Well, they Bowl probably were. It hasn't really always been that way. Yeah. So, Sandy says, but it says Super Bowl on it. Well, that was from the thing. So, what I'm saying is I get it when it comes to selling stuff that says Super Bowl on it. But like, if all you're doing is advertising that you're gonna have a viewing party, like that you're literally bringing people to watch the advertising that they make money on. But whatever. Um, okay, so this is this uh, this great Cabbage Patch Kids Camp Cabbage 1990 um, sweatshirt. This is actually new with tags. It still has a little tag on it right there. Now I do I do have this question. Maybe somebody um, you can see this is with the. With, I've never actually seen this particular tag, but there's so many tags out there, especially from like the 80s, and this mm -hmm. is 1990, so it's right there on the cusp. Um, uh, I, I I did want to ask if anybody knows if there's like a specific term for like this is like one of those sweatshirts where it's actually more of like a canvasy material, and there's no um, fleecing on the inside. So like you now, like most sweatshirts, they're more fleecy and soft on yeah. the inside, and this is like a really thin. It's weird. It's, it's like it's, this. It's, it's than crepe. It's like material. a crepe, crepe, not a crepe sole, but it's like a crepe. Uh, that's just how I describe it. It was a very thing. Uh, 80s thing. Like I find a lot of like 80s sweatshirts and stuff like that that have more of this material. And I always hope like that somebody one, that came from Barry, right? That was yeah. I always hope though that somebody doesn't buy it, thinking it's gonna be all soft and cushy and comfy, and it's just like this really thin material. But um, that's pretty cool. Uh, and then I have a few jackets here. How much stuff do you have? Do you have um, Let me just go through these jackets. I then, have about four things. Yeah, to we'll show. go through these jackets, and then you can go. And then I have my one awesome, awesome thing. I got. So this uh, last week when we went to um, some Sabers, um, this was you know usually when we go to Warm Springs, I find tons of stuff. I didn't find a whole lot, but I did find this jacket, which I was really happy about. This is actually a um, Alpha Industries. This is not vintage, but it's an Alpha Industries bomber jacket. Um, this particular one has like this kind of cottony hoodie built in. It doesn't it doesn't roll up, but it kind of tucks into the back of it. It's like a sweatshirt hood in the back of yeah, a jacket. Yeah, it's kind of a soft sweatshirt hood, but it's like a bomber jacket. Um, but it's really cool. It's got this uh, it's got a helicopter patch on the on the sleeve, and then it's got these really cool um, pockets. You see, like the like these that come up. I'm not. I don't know. Are these? Maybe somebody out there knows. So this particular type of jacket is called like a. Um, an engine jacket is what they call it. Uh, and it's I, not like a flight jacket. It's weird. Well, no, it's like the guys that work on the engines. They're, it is a flight jacket. Like they wear it on the on the um, helicopter or whatever. Or like you know, but it's a. They call it an engine jacket. But these is this considered like the document a document um, uh, pocket? It's just kind of this interesting pocket that like zips all the way open. So maybe somebody out there knows exactly what that's called. Know. It's but weird. anyway, it's just a really cool jacket. These sell um, new. They sell for like two hundred dollars. This particular one's nowhere anywhere on eBay or anywhere I could find it. This yellow color. Um, and so I listed it. So it's two hundred right now on sale for two hundred. But I'm hoping I can get like one fifty for it. So it's just really cool. Um, no, it doesn't stretch. Wait, no, they're talking some, about the cabbage the cap patch shirt. You got a few uh, questions on the cabbage patch shirt. Yeah, so it's not stretchy. It's not it's really not stretchy. It's not stretchy, at all. and what size is it? It is an XL. So. It's an XL, but it's that's an XL it's men's. Like an oversized, it's like that oversized. 90s oversized. It's it's pretty big. Yeah. Um, it's like, I, it's already listed in my store, so if you want to go look at uh, measurements, you can. Yeah, and Erin, um, uh, Erin, just message her through through eBay or if actually go find the listing and then just send me a message. Yeah, and mess. I would say message her through the her my email. 
email. Yeah, so I'm not, not through my, eBay yeah. if you're looking for uh, off eBay pricing. Yeah. Um, but anyway, to be fair. <laughs> yes. So yeah, so I'm hoping to get like 150 for this. It's a really nice jacket. Again, there's not, there aren't any others that are like it right now. Um, and then I got these two jackets that I picked up from Barry that I thought were pretty, pretty, pretty awesome. All the stuff is already listed. So let's get my stuff up fast, guys. Uh, I got to make it work for you. Anyway, this is this really cool um, Fujitsu, Fujitsu 10 car audio jacket. Now, Fujitsu 10 is, uh, is a, a Japanese company that um, they actually have a different name now. I can't remember the name is. It's in my listing. Um, I showed the different name, but they changed their name at some point. Um, this is like an 80s. Um, probably like uh, somebody that worked for the company because if you look at the the tag it actually says I don't even know what the brand is because it just says it was made for uh, Fujitsu 10 car audio and so it's just this really awesome kind of almost rose gold I don't know what color would you call this not quite a rose like gold a bronze. it's like a bronzy um, it's like a cross between a gray and then like has a little bit of a gold hue to it so yeah, yeah like a bronze like a bronze anyway super cool jacket got this one listed for like 200 bucks hoping to get like 150 Already has a couple of watchers on it. Um, so people are definitely paying attention to it. And then there's this fantastic. I love this jacket. This is a uh, fountain power boats jacket. And so it's got embroidery down both sleeves. You can see like that right here. Um, team, this, is a, this is a pretty great jacket. Yeah, too. Team, uh, team fountain. And then the back actually has this full embroidered power boat. If you want to go speed boating, if you want to do some racing on your boat, you want to get this jacket. And, um, you, and you apparently have to be southern to do some racing on I your boat. I don't know. But anyway, and this is kind like of it's not quite southern white. Action. It's like a I don't know if you would call this an ivory or an off white or whatever. It's not quite cream, cream white. color. It's kind of a very light cream color. But this is an amazing jacket as well. I also have this listed for like two hundred, hoping to get about one fifty because this is just like a, a fantastic jacket. With a, is it a with cigar a boat? Greg asked. I don't know. What do you I don't know. It? I guess that's what skinny boats look like. Yeah, cigar boats. Who knows? Who knows? Don't ask me these questions. Um, anyway, another fantastic '80s. Justin Pacman. This is a little, just a little, little fire. One little fire. One little, one little fire. <laughs> anyway, yeah. So that's all I have, other than my one magical find from yesterday. So why don't you go ahead and show us the rest of what you have? Uh, so I picked these up last weekend. I actually there was a guy that had about six things for sale at his garage sale, and it was only we only went to it because it was across the street from the one that we had intended to go to. Um, and I bought almost everything he had. So I paid eighty dollars. I did. Pay I up. did scout out for you. You did. You uh, did. I, I, I bought. Dog. I bought five things for $80 and I've got four of them up here. One I already mm -hmm. listed, so it's put away, but I bought uh, some of these large department 56, and it's, sorry, it's uh, Halloween items. This is pretty big. So I paid $80 for five of them and some, most of them are going to sell for 50 to a hundred dollars, depending on which ones they are. I think this is the one that, that sells for um, quite a bit. So, uh, Department 56. The guy selling them also had a chocolate lab whose name was Cinnamon. He was a boy and he was very cute and sweet. Yep. That was uh, an important detail. Okay. Sorry. Got to talk about the dog. Uh, haunted Treehouse. So, like, the Department 56 is hit or miss. Some Department 56 stuff sells really well. It depends on the village. It depends on which items. Uh, almost everything is retired. I don't think Department 56 makes a heck of a lot of these village pieces any longer. So, people collect them. I'm one of them. I actually collect... It's one of the only things I collect. I collect the Dickens Village from Department 56, which has long been retired. And I buy pieces here and there. I just don't have any room to buy any more. Um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so I think, uh, so I have these. And then I have uh, I have the, another big house that I listed. And then I have this one, which is like a, a 50. It's got like, I don't even know how many pieces. It's got 22, 20, 22 piece little mini accessory kit and this sells for at least sixty dollars I paid ten dollars for this and it's new a lot this one is new because uh, I think like three out of the five are new um, they're still all wrapped in their plastic inside so the Halloween does very well uh, for mm -hmm. department 56 so it's probably the most profitable and also the Lemax or Lomax brand that you can buy at uh, Michael's uh, the Halloween collection the Halloween village stuff sells really well but their Christmas stuff not as well so those were a good buy. Um, 
Unfortunately, I picked them up a little too late to capitalize on uh, the Halloween week, but I will get the rest of them listed today. And uh, maybe someone will still be looking yeah. for them because they have theirs out. So, uh, so Jen Lee, uh, real quick, uh, wants, to, wants to buy at least one ring light from our link. Um, the, the, the link that I have down there does take you one that has the diffuser in it. Um, it, it all should come, everything you need should be, um, through that link. And I will say, um, one is going to be plenty to start out with. I, we both think, feel like two works better. I think two um, is the but, magic number, but, but I got really good photos off of one. Um, and you know what, you're spending like a hundred bucks, you know, maybe if it's on sale 80, uh, you know, if you can only afford to get one right now, or you're only willing to, to put up that much money right now, one is better than none. Um, two is a little bit better, but, uh, it's not necessary. So, yeah, yeah. I think, I, I think if you can afford to do it, two is, two is fantastic, but one is a good start. It's definitely better than anything else out there as far as, uh, regular, uh, light kits for that pricing. I think. I think the ring lights were a, a good addition for us, mm -hmm. for sure. That and the pull down screen, mm -hmm. which I only I only paid sixty bucks for that on on. Um, yeah, and I've bought Amazon. both of the ring lights, so. Mm -hmm. they, um, so this I picked up. I picked this up for three dollars. Uh, it's still in the original packaging, which is as you can see a little shuckwad, right? So it's fallen apart. But I paid two dollars. These are original '90s Lion King. Uh, baby Simba and Nala, and they're oh, kissing. Get a room. I know they're kissing their magnets. If you look these up, if you're if you price it properly and do your look at the little magnet faces, they're so cute, disgusting. Um, so they're new, obviously, crappy open packaging, but I I think I can get about $75 for these. They sell pretty well, and I don't buy a lot of plush, um, but I do occasionally when it's really good ones. And this hop, I, I just had it. They were, it was only $2 I was buying it anyway, but when I got home and checked the comps on it, I was mm -hmm. pleasant, pleasantly surprised. It's a good one. Apparently, Sandra's on a pinning rampage right now. Pinned ya. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I'm, I'm assuming Pinterest or something. Oh, all right. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Uh, all right. So. And. One more thing. Yep. One last item, and then I'm done. Picked this up yesterday. I did pay $8 for this. This is a board game. It was, it's from 1950, from the 1950s. It is complete. Uh, some have sold very inexpensively because I think the people that listed them are stupid. Um, but I think I can get about $80 for it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So Kinetic Girl wants to know, are ring lights better than umbrella lights? I will say yes. A hundred percent. You can get an umbrella light kit for cheaper. Um, but I don't think cheaper enough that you shouldn't just get one ring light in my opinion. So um, if you're going to go ahead and buy the lights, then might as well just go for the, the ring light. Yeah. Uh, these are not the Douglas brand. I know what you're talking about. Those are the top dollar ones. Those are generally the really big, um, Simba and Nala stuffed animals and Mufasa. Th those are Douglas brand. These are Mattel. Mm -hmm. Uh, so they are original nineties, but they're not the Douglas brand. I know what you're talking about. Those are the ones that you get. They're like 36 inches and they sell for like four or 500 bucks. I have no idea Crazy. why, but they do. Um, crazy. All right. I got my one last find guys. So we went to two savers yesterday and, uh, the first savers we went to, I literally bought two things. Um, one of them was a really awesome, uh, not vintage Johnny cash, cash t-shirt that I'll probably just flip at Buffalo. And the other one was this t-shirt. I'll tell you, uh, Greg, I think you're going to appreciate this. Um, but here's the thing, like, you know, lately, as of late, probably within this last year, um, you know, vintage streetwear has been popular for a very long time, but it has really, really hit its pace like this last year with stuff really becoming a lot more mainstream between people watching stuff like Round to the Show, watching Slobby Robbie, all this stuff. So we, so it's like you go to the t-shirt section of Savers and depending on the time of day, it will be overrun with like high school kids and, you know, adults as well, but it'll just be like jam packed with dudes flying through those t-shirts, usually destroying the whole section. It's ridiculous. And so the likelihood that you're ever going to find like a really cool, like actual vintage band t-shirt or really awesome vintage, uh, you know, sports t-shirt, it just doesn't really happen. I usually find kind of more obscure vintage t-shirts there that I really As like. As Sandra says, the t-shirt bros. Yeah, yes. t-shirt bros. I, I can't be bothered. Yeah, so I usually, I still find cool stuff there because a lot of the, like the more obscure vintage stuff that like I like to get that well, I make money on. Stuff and you're your stuff like that they um, don't what? care the racing stuff that you buy all those those weird like 
Well, racing stuff is is super I, popular in streetwear. I mean, like your five k racing. Oh, that kind of stuff. That's, that's what type, I mean. The, the that's type stuff. of crap that people don't they don't realize. Buy. They don't necessarily realize that it sells. As much. It doesn't say Adidas or yeah. Tommy Hilfiger. But even that, I don't it. find a lot of it. I get most of my my really cool T shirts. I end up getting at like Buffalo Exchange or from other resellers now. So guys. When I saw this T-shirt, I almost, I almost, I thought it for a second. I was like, "That's a reprint," but I was like, "Wow, what a weird reprint!" I never see, you know, because you have like your basic bands that mm -hmm. have their reprints, like ACDC, Metallica, uh, you know, some of the other ones you might Guns see. Guns and Roses, yeah. But those are the really popular ones. Um, so I saw this, and I'm like, "Well, that's a weird reprint." And then I looked a little closer. And I'm like, "But that's single stitch." And then I looked at the tag, and I'm like, "No, that's seriously, that's like a legit T-shirt." Are you guys ready? Have I? rambled on long enough have i built this up and i would like to point out guys i was all excited i was going to do an instagram video and i wanted to like super tease uh the this find for today's show and so i didn't tell i didn't show vicky because i wanted it to be like a genuine reaction and so but i felt like i gave her enough information as i, I was like look at this t-shirt i'm like my heart's pounding i got kind of a knot in my stomach because i'm so excited i can't believe i found this it took a second for me to process yeah thanks susie i show it to her and this is what she does she looks at it and she's like well it made it a good trip for you <laughs> and i'm like seriously that's your response i'm like wow people are not going to be able to wait to, to watch this show oh. susie beach susie biatch you shut your mouth <laughs> Okay, here we go, guys. Right here. We got Wasp. We got Wasp. This is, uh, let's get close up on this, uh, on the, close up on, on the date here. I don't know why I can't get this straightened out, but it says 1984. Oh, it's not really focusing on it, but 1984, show the back, winged assassins. We won't talk about the um, ill-placed, inappropriately placed apostrophe. But winged assassins, or I guess it's winged assassin. Is there only one winged assassin? I don't know. Is uh, it the tour of the winged winged assassin? It might be. Or is it supposed to be winged assassins plural? I I I I feel like you should know rocker chick. Rocker chick who doesn't give a shit about my cool wasp t-shirt. I don't really care. But back wasp. off. I wish it smelled like bo and I put it all over your face. I didn't wash this one. Some rocker has armpits all in there. He was a tiny rocker. It was a <laughs> tiny shirt. <laughs> it's a medium. Anyway, it's 1984, 1985 tour. Uh, it does have like a tiny little hole in the armpit, but that's okay because when you're rocking your ass off, you don't care if you got a little ventilation in that pit. That's right. I said the pit, not the underarm, biatch. Anyway. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Single stitch. Ridiculous. <laughs> so this t-shirt, this t-shirt has sold, uh, you know, I could probably sell it pretty quickly if I priced it like 80 bucks. It sold for 200 before. I have it listed for 200 and I hope during the holiday season. Uh, some wasp fan is going to have a girlfriend who's going to want to hook him up with this sweet wasp t-shirt. And, uh, my only wasp I can, I can talk my, I have a wasp story. Oh, you have a wasp story. I can be like, I know the guys from wasp and well, they're not really that cool. So that's no, actually like, that's not true. That's not true. Chris Holmes, uh, who's, who is, is, was a member of wasp lived in Vegas until about three years ago. And I have met him a few times because mm -hmm. he would always be hanging out at Vamped. I've got yeah. pictures with our buddy, Scott. I took pictures of Scott did like, so a you're like I can hang out with Wasp. I don't need the t-shirt. I didn't say I hung out with him. He's a weird, he was a weird, weird fall down drunk. <laughs> so what you're saying is that's why you don't think my t-shirt find is cool. Anyway, everybody else thinks it's really cool guys. And I'm, anyway, my hope is to get like, I was totally name dropping Reg. Yeah, I, I just We're like BFFs because I met him twice, maybe three times. <laughs> anyway, I'm hoping to get like 150 for this. But seriously, you do not find this kind of stuff at Savers anymore unless, I mean, first of all, I've never found something this good at Savers as far as like a rock t-shirt goes. Uh, maybe you luck out and it comes out on the go out rack and you happen to look at the go out rack first and you grab it. This was out there. It was a Saturday in the middle of the day. There was a ton of people going through the t-shirts. I had watched multiple people go down that same row. Yeah. Get it out of my face. I, Deb says, ask him about the apostrophe. I think he moved to Germany. I think Maybe that's, I think that's where I said he moved. Okay, here's, I like doing the one or two thing like uh, we did on Greg's show. Okay. Say one, if you think that that's just bad grammar, bad, uh, they don't know how to use apostrophes. Or say two, if you think that it's a single winged assassin and the assassin has his own tour. And so it belongs to the the winged assassin, um, and so you think it's just that they they don't they don't understand that plurals don't have apostrophes because I'm like 
it's a band, so wouldn't they be the winged assassins, plural? Nobody said 80s rockers were smart. I'm just saying. I think my my rocker story is way better than even Vicky's because my rocker story is they dumb. They dumb. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everybody says, everybody says yeah, one. Darlene says two. <laughs> Darlene, Darlene says no. It's one winged it's assassin. one single winged assassin that yeah. is on the rampage. <laughs> and Susie... Biznatchy, as I'm going to now call her, says nobody cares. Says, Susie, if you were really clever, you would have said three, nobody cares. <laughs> anyway, that was my exciting find for the week. Literally my one find for the week. Well, other than that Michigan jacket, I guess. It's a posh picker. And the one, per one, and the person buying that wouldn't know the difference. Ding, ding, ding. We have a winner. <laughs> we have a winner. That's true. That's true. Oh. That's true. Uh, Sandra says that my rocker story is I've never met one, but I have met Bobby Brown. Well, you know what? That's your prerogative, okay? <laughs> you can do what you want to do, okay? <sighs> okay? That's all I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. Mm -hmm. All right. So that's, I guess that's the end of our show. That's we still, it. We still managed to, to fill up a, an hour and a half of nonsense. Mm -hmm. uh, but thanks, guys. Thank you, everybody, for coming. We appreciate it. Uh, we had a lot of fun. We always we'll have fun. You, I guess we'll see you on Wednesday mm -hmm. for our Boss Up and List show. For our local people in the chat, Susan, Susan especially. I see Nate, but I see Susan Sanders in there. Listen, Susan. Tuesday night. Tuesday night is our meetup. Tuesday it's night. It's your butt out here, Susan. We'll I realize I realize we're all across town. Nate, but you better I have Elizabeth you. with you. Get on over here for, uh, for this month's meetup. And... Uh, we will see you Tuesday night. There will be cookies. Ooh. There may be more than that. I don't know. We'll depend on what uh, what Corey and uh, and Dorothy end up bringing because they tend to be bring they tend to bring stuff. I need to talk to Corey about chocolate chip cookie though. We do have some out of sight. Uh, uh, oh wait a minute! Before we leave, Robin has a question. I'll get to that in a second, Robin. Um, we do have some out of state guests coming in for the meetup. Uh, so we will have a good 20 25 people again this this uh this month so it's going to be a a full house a i'm going to get time i'm going to get some extra chairs make sure we have enough room we were a little tight last last month so it might yeah. be again this month uh somebody so can sit on my lap it. uh and uh, robin asked a uh, question how do we have the light set up so we have them set up uh side by side on an angle yeah and so if you look that makes you can like, kind of see like it. kitty corner yeah you can just like kind of like this you can kind of see it um, in one of my Facebook posts, not Facebook posts, Instagram posts um, this last week where I was taking pictures of that, that, uh, that well, I can't remember the name of the jacket, the Japanese audio jacket, car audio jacket. Mm -hmm. You can see them, the first photo, you can see the lights because I took it from behind the lights to kind of, so you can kind of see how they're set up a little bit. Um, so just play around with it and whatnot. Um, and before we go, I see uh, that, where is it, Greg, Dupage. Pick air extraordinaire five dollar super chat says thanks again. Thank you, Greg. And guys, if you have not watched our No Pants Friday show after dark with Greg, he does serenade us at the end. He does. So he actually do made not, me teary eyed. He it made, was really sweet. Uh, not that it takes a lot. He made cry baby I don't, I don't, pants. I don't mean to downgrade the um the skill set, but I do cry a little bit more easily than mm -hmm. than most mm -hmm. so i mean that's true but yeah we're gonna go ahead and go and uh, i believe susan has a reseller crush on greg okay so okay. Susan, and i'm thinking we're gonna try yeah. to all right so I'm we're gonna try to make this this introduction happen we're gonna go and uh but before we do go i just want to make sure everybody knows that uh we had a tire blowout the side of the road i had to pee in a cup and Vicky sang the ABC song to me while I peed in the back seat, and it was awesome.